All right. Good to go? Yep. Excellent. All right. And, uh, I'll wait for these guys to get their seats here. It's showing up a little bit late. But, uh, you woke me up this morning, man. <laughs> uh, the name of this talk, if you can't tell from the, uh, the slide up there, is called The Rise and Fall of Payphones and the Evolution of Freaking. Uh, it's not going to be very technical, so it's just a basic history lesson. So if you want to leave, you can go ahead and do that now. Um, to start it off, I, I want to kind of try and set the scene for the beginning of this whole thing, so uh, I'm going to ask everyone to please close your eyes for a second, and I, I can wait until you guys are all ready. Okay, now I want you to imagine that you're in Havana right now, and that it is the year uh, 1849. Okay, so everybody got that? Okay, now open up your eyes. All right, so now that you're all, you know, kind of in, in the zone there, uh, we can start with our little history lesson for today. Um, basically, the, the telephone in general all started out with this guy, and uh, his name is Antonio Meucci. Uh, he was actually an inventor from Italy who was living in Havana for one reason or another. Um, and as you can tell from his backwards hat, he was way ahead of his time in fashion. Um, he was he was kind of a weird guy. Uh, he I mean he was an inventor, but he you, you don't tend to make a lot of money in, as an inventor until you actually make something. So as kind of a side job, he worked at this theater, which is uh, called the Grand Teatro de Tacon, or I don't know how to pronounce it officially, but uh, really what he did at this theater was he made a series of pipes that ran from the control room in the theater to the backstage area so that people in the control room could talk to people in the backstage area without having to like shout across the, the theater in the middle of the show. Which was really cool because it's kind of where the whole idea for the telephone starts out. Um, as, as he was working at this place, he also, uh, he was working on using a, a method of treating illnesses by using electric shocks, which was basically he took a, a piece of copper wire with electricity running through it and touched you with it. And uh, while he was testing this on a really good friend of his, he was in the other room and he heard his friend screaming through the wire. And so that was where he got this awesome idea of, I should make this a telephone. And uh, in, actually in 1854, he demonstrated the first electronic telephone in uh, New York City. And then I think 1871, he uh, filed a patent caveat, which is basically him saying, I'm, I'm not patenting this right now, but I swear I'm going too soon. And uh, he, he ended up not getting it, as you're probably aware. Uh, probably about 10 years before he actually filed his patent caveat, there was a guy named Philip Rice, who I swear wasn't this blurry in real life. Um, he made his own kind of telephone, which was actually made from a piece of pig intestine, a little platinum cube, and uh, a cigar box. Which, amazingly enough, as pointless and stupid, he used to transmit his voice 340 feet, which was pretty good. Um, but as you can probably imagine, that didn't catch on very much. You'd kind of have to slaughter a pig every time you wanted to use the phone. Um, and of, I mean, of course, everyone knows this guy, uh, Alexander Graham Bell, who, you know, he patented the telephone. He, in Canada, they still call it think of him as the inventor since he's from Canada. Uh, he actually made and patented his telephone in 1875, I think. Um, and it was, it was kind of unique in the fact that the mouthpiece and the earpiece were one thing. It was just like a little tube. And it looked like that. But uh, it was really cool. I mean, there's not much to say about it. It was, it was interesting. But uh, now we're actually going to jump forward and talk about payphones, which is probably why you guys are here. Um, the first payphone was invented in 1889 by a guy named William Gray. And uh, I can't find any pictures of him online every, anywhere. But um, it looked something like this. This is a he made. 
Uh, it was installed in a bank in Hartford, Connecticut, which was cool. But what made this phone really interesting is that it's a post-pay phone, where basically, uh, originally, you'd pick up the phone, dial your number, and make your, or talk to the operator, and make your call, and then pay after you made your call. So that's, that's the second worst idea in this timeline of bad ideas for telecommunications. The first, of course, being using a piece of pig intestine. Um, <laughs> really, I mean, I, I mean it, it's kind of self-explanatory why this is a bad idea. I mean, you know, you just make your call and then leave. As long as you can outrun the guy who owns the phone, you should be good. And while this guy plays with my uh, little microphone here, I'll just give you guys a second. Are we good? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, you can imagine that you know you just don't pay the money for it, and that's cool. Uh, and a lot of people did that. So about 10 years later, the phone company decides, hey, this isn't good. We should have done something about this 10 years ago. And so uh, I believe it was Western Electric made what's called the number five coin collector which I don't have a picture of. Basically, that all it does is it makes it so that you have to pay before it will let you dial out, which was good for the phone company and bad for people who were just trying to get a free phone call out of the thing. So that was cool. Um, now, the payphone, in I, I guess the first eight or so years that it was around, got really, really popular. And actually, uh, around 1902, there were, oh, I skipped one. There were 81,000 payphones in America in the first eight or nine years of its existence, which is good, all things considered. Um, it prompted the phone companies to decide that, well, originally all these payphones were inside some, a building somewhere. So they were like, what if we put these things outside so that people can like, just walk up and use them wherever? And so they did that. And uh, the first one was actually installed in Ohio, I think it was Cincinnati, don't quote me on that, in, uh, in 1905, which was pretty cool. Um, so anyways, time kind of goes on, and uh, not a lot changes for payphones. There's big changes in the, tel the telephone industry. In uh, 1915, we make the first call across the Atlantic, which was cool. Uh, 1935, we make the first call around the world, which is even cooler. And uh, stuff really started to change after we could call you all around the world. And around 1851, probably the biggest change at that time was uh, the phone companies introduced what's called direct distance dialing, which I have a fun little advertisement here. Um, basically, direct distance dialing was instead of, let's say you wanted to call your buddy an actor, instead of picking up the phone and having your operator call the operator an actor, who then called your friend an actor, you picked up the phone and just directly called your friend, and you got him. Uh, and it was probably cheaper, I'm going to assume, because you didn't have to wait for 45 minutes to get connected. Um, that was a really cool thing. Uh, it, that kind of brought the big movement in the phone industry, kind of uh, what was considered by most people to be the, the golden age of phone cribbing to start out. Got okay. another one here? It's for the video one. Okay. Um, so yeah, we started with what, what people generally refer to as the golden age of phone creeping, which was cool. Um, nobody's really sure, or at least I haven't been able to pinpoint it down, who the first phone freaks were, or who the, the official first one was. Uh, it was kind of more of an instance of, you know, here's somebody over here that's doing something that's really cool, and at the same time, here's somebody over here doing the same kind of thing, and they just don't really know each other, so it's not really, nobody really knows who the first one was. It's kind of assumed that there were two guys, uh, one in New York named Bill. That's, that's all the information that we, I can find on him, which makes it really hard to find like pictures and stuff of him, because Bill turns off a lot of searches on Google. Um, and then there was a guy named uh, Joe Ingressia, who uh, more recently changed his name legally to Joy Bubbles, which is quite interesting. But uh, Joe Ingressia was kind of cool, because he was blind. And, uh, well, they, they both discovered that they could make this sound, 
that when they did it, it made this phone do a really cool thing. And that was the, the infamous 2600 hertz tone, which it has kind of formed what phone freaking is today. Uh, Joe Ingressia could whistle it perfectly. He had perfect pitch, and he could just go up to a phone and whistle it off, which earned him the, the nickname The Whistler, which kind of started this whole handle thing in the, in the hacker scene, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but Bill actually used uh, one of these, which if you've ever taken an elementary school music class, you will instantly recognize as a recorder. Um, to this day, I've never figured out how the hell he made that sound with this thing. I think it's impossible, but he apparently did it. Uh, if anyone can figure it out, get, get in touch with me and uh, I will make a church for you or something. Um, but yeah, basically, they could play this tone that would cause the, uh, the trunk that they were on to... I, 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 I don't know the technical aspects of this. It's kind of before my time. But basically, it would, uh, it would drop the trunk so that they could make a call out to anywhere they want, which was really cool for them. And uh, people started to say... Other people were like, hey, that's a really cool idea, as they showed people. And they started to make little electronic devices, which uh, they called the blue box which most people are familiar with it, even if you've never used one. Uh, and the blue box was cool. Um, a lot of people used it, and as people used it, they started to discover other cool little electronic devices they could have, like uh, the red box or the black box or mute box, whichever one you want to call it. Um, the red box was cool. I don't have a picture of it, but I actually have here. What they would do is a lot of times they would take a little Radio Shack pocket tone dialer like this, and you can modify it to where it will play the tones that a payphone would make when you insert money. So that if you played them into the payphone, the payphone would go, oh, hey, that's the money, so here's your free open line to call whatever, which a lot of people used, and people still use it to this day in some parts of the country. Uh, and then there was the black box, which I also don't have a picture of, which basically you hook it up to your line at home and it just makes it so that the phone, when you pick it up, if someone's calling you, doesn't register that it's been picked up, and it just keeps ringing, but you don't get billed for anything. And the person that's calling you doesn't get billed for anything. But while you're talking, the whole time, it keeps ringing. So every you know, four or five seconds through your conversation, you have to take a break while this thing blares a ring in your ear. Um, but you don't have to pay for it, and that's, what's, that's what was important for everybody. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that, that, that was really, after that, there was a million of these little boxes that came around and people were inventing them and taking the same ones and renaming them and it became just a big, ugly mess after that. Um, but with these first three boxes, people thought it was cool. And uh, eventually, people who weren't really interested in the exploration part of it realized, hey, I can use this so I don't have to pay. So I'm going to use this all the time. And... Uh, phone companies started to say, oh, that's not a good thing. So uh, they started introducing uh, different switching systems. They, uh, start, they, they did, uh, originally it was called in-band signaling, which allowed you to play the tones down the same line that you're talking on. And so they changed that so you couldn't do that. They started muting handsets on phones until you put the money in so that you couldn't play tones into it and all sorts of fun stuff like that. Um, but, you know, people, you know, the phone started to change, and so people started to find new ways to have fun with them. But uh, eventually, the phone, the payphone industry at least, started to take a, a, a slow dive and to kind of the death that it's in today. And uh, it was surprisingly, for the most part, not because of these people scamming free calls. It was because of this. And I'm not talking about that old guy. I'm talking about the Zach Morris phone. Um... And all the cell phones that have come after it. Zach Morris phone wasn't really have a big impact on the payphone industry itself because at the time, really the only people who had them were like high paying executives and Zach Morris. Um, but you know, as the technology gets cheaper and everything, people start to uh, not really care about payphones anymore. And uh, they start to pull them out. As you can tell from looking at, you know, a good example, if you walk right outside this room, there is a bank of where there used to be payphones. There's one payphone in this hotel that doesn't even work anymore. Um, and so most companies are deciding, hey, this payphone thing just isn't worth the money to operate anymore. 
So in uh, February 1st, I believe, 2001, uh, my phone company, Bell South, decided that they're like, you know what? Screw this. We're done with this payphone thing. They either pulled out all their payphones from their, their booths or they just sold them to other companies. And uh, recently, I believe Quest Communications is starting to do the same thing. Uh, on a, a lower level, they're just starting to sell them off to independent companies. But uh, I mean, with, with the invention of cell phones and the cheaper it gets, uh, we start to get, especially with the, the customizable face plates and ringtones and all this crap that makes it like a fashion statement to have your cell phone, uh, it really puts us into this rainbow colored polyphonic crazy frog hell that we live in today. Um, and it really killed the payphone industry. And uh, unfortunately, I think that that's really the end of it. I, I think that soon there are not going to be any more payphones, which is horrible in my opinion. I think they're a great tool for people who are not, you know, who don't really have a cell phone, people who are, are, have a low income and can't afford to, uh, can't afford to buy one. But um, unfortunately, that is th this is the end of the, the payphone era is, as it was. And uh, I guess we have to move on from there. But um, that is actually, I believe, going to be the end of this presentation. And I'm sure I wrapped it up way early. And I'm glad you guys got here just in time. Um, but now you're in time for the trivia with prizes. Um, and actually, the first, uh, as I trip over my own backpack, I got this painting here. Um, this is an original painting by my fiance. Uh, yes, I know. It's, she's famous, I swear. Um, and uh, I will give this to whoever can tell me who the first female operator in America was. Excellent. Um, I will give this to the first person who raises their hand. Oh, shit. <laughs> um, Do it again. Yeah. I will give this to the first person who pays me money. No. Um, yeah. I don't know. Somebody come get this picture. It's free. <laughs> uh, we also have another one, which I'm sure I'll probably end up doing the same thing. I got this phone here, which is quite nice. Um, and this, this question, actually, I, I, if you didn't get that one, this one's probably going to be a little bit harder. Um, IBM has a subsidiary company that makes PBXs and phones and all sorts of cool stuff like that. And uh, whoever can tell me the name of that company? No. Bonus points if you can s pronounce it correctly. You can come get this phone. OK. I, th I should choose easier questions next time, I suppose. Um, IBM, actually, the company they own is, it's spelled R-O-L-M. I have no idea in the world how to pronounce that word. As far as I can tell, it's Rolm. I think it used to be a German company. Yeah, I, I have no idea. I just know that's what we use at my work, and that's where I got these phones. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I guess if anybody wants this, it's also free, except to the person who just got the painting. Um, yeah, so if anybody wants this, that's cool. Uh, if anybody has any questions or anything, now would be the time. Otherwise, and we got somebody in the back here. Um, you gave us a little bit of history on the payphones. Yeah. Uh, do you have any more history? I uh, know there were a lot of advances, especially once they started uh, making it so that you couldn't play tones in the handset. Surprisingly, I... Uh, the phones that weren't owned by the telcos themselves. Yeah, there, so, well, there is a lot. Uh, and a lot is not well documented in places that are easy to find. Uh, you do have, once, uh, once the phone company started kind of deciding that payphones weren't really for them, a lot of uh, independent companies started coming up and made what's called a COCOT phone, which is a customer-owned, coin-operated telephone. And uh, that's basically, those are really evil little bastards. Um, they, they don't operate in any way that normal payphones would on a, like a background level. I mean, normal people see it and they're just like, payphone, I put money in, it makes a call. Cool. Uh, the internal workings are, for the most part, really screwy. They depend on phone to phone. Um, I'm sure if I, if I could get into, you know, 
each and every kind of cocot company and the stuff that's inside the phones, this presentation would probably have been a lot longer than it is, um, which probably would have been a good thing. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, there there are a lot. There's a lot I didn't cover here. Um, I wish that I had had some time and all that good stuff. But uh, unfortunately, I mean, I I don't really know a lot about the the whole cocot industry and all that stuff in there. I just kind of went with what I could find information on. So. Do you know if cocots are generally, uh, if they generally do all their, uh, hey, we got money, hey, we didn't get money inside? Uh, I'm actually not sure. A phone line that you get at the house, or do they send some sort of signaling back to the uh, CO? Um, I, I'm not totally oh, certain about that. Yeah. He could probably answer this question for you. Uh, a code cop will work on a POTS line. Um, it doesn't actually use a ground start, so you could actually, if you owned one, you could actually hook it up to your own home line. Yeah. Um, it generates all the billing in the phone on the PCB board. There's actually a little switch you can turn it on. So, and yeah. Off. So, yeah. It, it actually generates the dial tone yeah. from the board. It's not the actual Excellent. line dial tone. Interesting. See, I wasn't aware of that. Uh, so, to answer your question, if you didn't hear him, uh, it does it all inside the phone. There's little computer type stuff inside there. Um, say what? Yeah. I don't know. That's the technology part goes over my head. I just I do the history stuff. I I get. Bring a cutaway of like some electric teller or something. No. I I did get this. That's my, that's my prop. Um, any other questions from anybody? Oh, we've got more people back here. What's uh, up? This is just kind of your personal opinion. But what do you think about, like, what are your, uh, where do you see phone hacking going? Like, do you see, like, the advancements being made to the same degree with cell phones that were made with pay phones and cell phones kind of overtook pay phones? In a sense, yeah. It, it's kind of a repeating cycle. Um, cell phones started out as just kind of this thing that, People were kind of iffy about, but now it's like, like how payphones were before cell phones came around, where everybody was using them. You know, you it, there were actually points where you'd had to stand in line for some time, some places to use payphones. But uh, I see cell phones going in the same way. I think uh, they'll probably stay around for a lot longer than the payphones did, just because the technology is more convenient for people. It's easier for people to have this thing in their pocket that they can walk around with instead of having to, you know be stuck to a wall for the most part. Uh, I, I, I really, I think that, oh, it, it's, it's starting to happen already. I, I think that that's really where the next generation of phone freaking is going to be. I mean, we've got voice over IP, which is a cool technology, and there's a lot of people playing with that. But I really see cellular technology being the next big thing that a lot of people are, gonna get, are getting into. So. Is anybody hooked up a phone? Yeah, I, as far as I know, it there shouldn't be any issue with it because it's more or less just a standard phone. So yeah, yeah. It, it powers off the line, so it would work. Yeah. So. What do you think about like the new hybrid stuff? that's like half keyboard, yeah. half internet monitor, half camera. Well, actually, we don't have those. We don't have those where I'm from. Uh, I'd love to play with them. I really would. Just. For, I could probably spend good hours playing with those things, but uh, unfortunately, Bell South doesn't, you know, operate the the payphones anymore, and I don't see Cocot companies throwing that much money out to try and uh, try and get me internet access or something. It's so, yeah, yeah, little data terminals and whatnot, but I don't know. I I've never had a chance to play with them, so. I, I, th I think it's an interesting technology. I, uh, I want to play with them really bad, but there's just none available to me where I'm from, at least. <coughs> Anyone else? As far as I know, on the newer switching systems, it does not work anymore. Uh, or if it does, then they know that it's wor the phone company sees you using it and you get busted for it. So 
as far as I can tell. Before, I think it was like 30 minutes or something, supposedly, that you could use it on the older switching systems before you would get, you know, you had to get off the phone within 30 minutes or else they'd notice or whatever. But as far as I know, it doesn't really work anymore. Got somebody back here? Um, it really depends. Uh, a lot of smaller, like places that have kind of smaller rural phone companies that still operate pay phones will have older s systems and they'll still use in-band signaling. Um, it's possible in some places with some phone companies to uh, unmute the handsets on the pay phones and still use it. Uh, but really, I mean, it, it's it's kind of limited where you can and can't use it depending. It's, I mean, I don't know all the places. I know uh, in Georgia you can't, but basically anywhere that anywhere that a phone comp the the regional phone company still operates pay phones, there's a chance you might be able to. So, yes. I just wanted to put out there that a lot of the hybrid pay phones now that are the not the Western Electric mm -hmm. forces, but they're shaped like them. They're, they act exactly like them. Yeah. Except they have like the digitally uh, generated dial tone and whatnot. You could it dials out a number first before dialing the number you put in there. Yeah. And if you have that number and you call from that phone, I believe it checks A and I. You hmm. will be able to still make free calls without a red box or anything. Interesting. I've actually never had a chance to. I've never heard of that technique. So. But yeah, if anybody's interested, uh, yeah, definitely. You got a phone or, uh, you can get a digital voice recorder. You could ju it's a one eight hundred number that you could dial from the phone, which is why it checks A and I. And um, you dial that number, it'll prompt you. It will give you two seconds to put in whatever number you want to call. So it's just a matter of getting the number. Oh, got to check in. You have to the PSTL. Right. So it has to be from the pay phone that calls the number. But yes, that's th thank you for sharing that information. I'll have to uh, I'll have to look more into that one myself. But um, anyone, Bueller, yes. I'm sorry. I I can't. I'll yeah, uh, I will. Uh, I'll have to go buy a new recorder and t and try that one out when I get back to Georgia. But um, yeah, like I, I mean, I that still to this day, like I was saying before, being able to play 2600 hertz with a little plastic recorder blew my mind to even think that people could do that. So, but yes, thank you for uh, for pointing that one out for me. Um. Yes, it was. Um, you you could use the yeah. If you covered up the second hole or something, I think on it and blue, it would create the twenty six hundred hertz tone. So yes, it was true. I I can't verify for sure whether he invented that or what, or if he just thought it was cool and took the name. Because um, there's really two sides of that story that gets everywhere. Uh, but yes, that do, that did work. Um, so yeah. <laughs> How long was that exploit available before they finally, the phone company cut it off? The blue boxing? No, the 2600. Oh, yeah, that's, that's well, that's similar. Like it's, oh, it's, it was a while. Um, I don't know exactly <laughs> how long. I know there are still uh, places that you can blue box in, I believe they're either in, uh, in America or in Canada. I can't remember where the switches are that will still respond to the 2600 hertz. Did that work on the digital switches or the old stuff? As far as I know, it doesn't work on the newer, the digital stuff. It works just on old uh, crossbar and stuff before then. Yes? Uh, the switches, they used to have that, um, I guess, security lapse open on them. Once we stopped using them, usually we sold them to somewhat friendly countries overseas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, most, most, uh, uh Probably not, no. 
Um, yeah, most most uh, smaller kind of third world type countries generally have, if they have a phone system, it's generally about as exploitable as the one here was in the 60s or so. So, I mean, it's, yeah, it, it, it there, chances are they're still running stuff that we ran 20, 30 years ago. So. <laughs> now, do you have a question over here, ma'am? Oh, okay. Um, so, cool. Anything? Anybody? Excellent. Um, thank you. Yeah, yeah. We that we actually these are the ones we used to use at my work, yeah. and now we've ha uh, we actually got the whole Rome phones to go with our Rome PBX. Oh, yeah. And uh, but yeah, I I'm really looking forward to stealing one of those when I quit my job. So I mean, having one turn up in my trunk when I quit my job. And oh, I love you. Yeah, that's yours. Enjoy it. The first.